notwithstanding that we're all profoundly grateful that peace has indeed prevailed in Europe, action to preserve and maintain peace arose only after damage had been done. It was reactive and not preventative. This is something that we cannot afford in climate. Unlike the European situation of the 1940s and the 1950s, in the response to climate change, the step-by-step -step approach and preventative action can actually be mutually reinforcing. Governments need to craft climate policy and initiate action, but they cannot rise to the challenge alone or in isolation. Business has a role in influencing governance, but it also has a role in preventative action. Under the Kyoto Protocol, negotiations are beginning to work against the clock. With the end of the first commitment period almost in sight and the critical need to ensure that pledges will be met, there is an urgent need to find a viable way forward in Durban. Yet within the negotiations, there is still uncertainty on how the nature and status of emission reductions should be handled as we move forward. A mitigation framework under the convention is in fact evolving, but it needs more time to be sufficiently detailed in terms of legal status, transparency, monitoring and accountability before it can become operational. In the meantime, what can be done? Durban needs to address both further commitments of developed country parties under the Kyoto Protocol and the evolution of the broader mitigation framework under the Convention, while ensuring the differentiated participation of developing countries. The economic social transformation needed for a two degree Celsius ceiling is nothing short of an industrial and energy revolution. It depends on a wide range of changeovers, from societal behavior changes to overriding national policies and investment redirections at levels never experienced before, going far beyond what we have under the Kyoto Protocol. The compounded result is that the scale of the task at hand exceeds the capacity of the political and economic mechanisms currently available to meet the task which means the willingness of governments to move forward ambitiously is severely handicapped unless, unless business provides the impetus. I stand before you with a clear request. Help us break the vicious cycle. Help us convert it into a virtuous cycle that can power new growth, create jobs in new sectors, help alleviate poverty, and stabilize the climate all at the same time. That is the type of preventative action that the world urgently needs, most importantly, to the minority progressive business. This is my most important question. Are you collectively being vocal enough to at least balance, if not drown out, the corporate voices of those who see no benefit in rapid action. Ladies and gentlemen, in climate change, reactive action will be too little and too late. Your leadership in preventative action is essential for three things. To push the envelope within your own business. Secondly, to bring around others in your business field, both up and down the value chain, to be more ambitious. And thirdly, to create a virtuous cycle of push and pull between public and private sectors to pave the road towards sustainability and the low carbon future.